Yeah, guys, we're gonna do just a little, not a lot, just a little scribbling today. Thanks for joining me on the channel. It is after hours and not as late as it was on Sunday's Coffee with Conti. A couple of you guys saw that and said, man, were you there at three something in the morning? Oh yeah, and then I got done editing and it was almost eight o'clock in the morning. That's right, this is my second job. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to my Corvette channel. I wanna talk about my car that's for sale, my current 2021 hardtop convertible that I'd be honored that one of you watching right now would get that car. We'll do that in a minute and talk about some projection estimates, just my personal estimates, nothing, nothing Intel-wise, just a conversation with you guys, kind of where we're at and where we're going, I think, with 2024 Corvette and the new model of the E-Ray coming. But real quick, I gotta take, ah, somebody's gotta do it. I gotta take a Z06 to the gas station. <laughs> just the presence this car has on the road. I'm grinning ear to ear like a little kid. I'm like, you know what? I really like this freaking Z06. This thing is just a monster, and the sound is simply intoxicating. Let's go for just a quick shh. Dan, I'm going just around the block real fast. We've done a lot of business together. I know you trust me, but man, I got I got to do something in this car, man. I can't. I never get tired of the sound. Never get tired of the sound. Some people have said, I don't know if I can handle that sound all the time. I got news for you. <laughs> Bring it on. I drive my Corvette a lot. I would do the same thing with this car, but I only could imagine having this car and having the ability to, to take it on track and do some of the autocross stuff that I'm doing. Oh man, oh man, oh man. We're gonna talk about my predictions for 2024 and how the breakout of these models, Z06 Stingray and E-Ray, and, and what I think the market's gonna be. I mean, basically, I'm an idiot. I said, this car feels like a race car. What the hell am I talking about? This car is a race car. incredible. And what did I say when I was in the car and other people have said the same thing? That Z06 sound, it is, I've been in one several times now and it is intoxicating, man. Holy crap, it is nuts. And some people go, oh, well, you know, I've sat in one, you know, and then you kind of feel it vibrate a little bit. Yeah, you know what? It feels great. It's a freaking race car. <laughs> yes, man, it is so different. That Z06 really is different. After watching all the videos for over a year, once you get your butt in the seat, oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I can't think about that car because Ricky can't afford that car. I barely could afford the replacement car that I got coming for 2023, which leads me to remind you that I am selling, and I know some people made some really snide comments. It's like, come on, man, I know what the marketplace is doing. So if you don't like what we're doing, see you later. We've got a really good core audience, and there's a lot of thought process that goes into what I'm talking about on channel and how we present it to you. So yes, my 2021 hardtop convertible is for sale. It is a non Z51, in case you didn't know. It's this car up in there, yes, in rapid blue. It's a 3LT car with a tension blue interior. It does have magnetic ride control. It does have performance exhaust. It has front grille guards, strut tower covers, jacking pucks, ACS carbon flash, Z51 front splitter and side rocker extensions. They match the side door profile perfectly. They're beautiful. And I added a carbon flash Z51 spoiler. The roof and the cells, carbon flash painted as well. It has the Paragon blue tint wide angle mirrors with the turn signal in the mirrors. I really love those. We did a vlog on that. And it has the gorgeous Spectre Gray Trident wheels on my Stingray. Will be about 30,000 miles when it's officially for sale later this month. If somebody commits it to the car in advance, you'll have it as soon as I get the VIN to mine at the National Corvette Museum. And then we'll go ahead and do the paperwork. Uh, once somebody commits to the car, I'm going to stop driving it and we're done. But 
Chuck and I are gonna talk in detail more about my car on this coming Tuesday's Tech Tuesday, and I've really spared no expense to maintain that car. It's been a good car. I'm putting rotors and brakes on it. Could you get past that a little bit? Absolutely, but I don't wanna get past it. I wanna do the right thing for the right reason. So feel confident if you're gonna buy that car, it's all good. And for those that are saying, no, that's the car he jumped. We did, we did it! Woo! <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh, can you guys believe it? Woo! We did it! Um, <laughs> it's, I keep talking about this, and it's funny. There's still people watching, I'm gonna burst your bubble, that don't realize that we really didn't jump the car. And it wasn't for you guys to think you know, it wasn't CGI'd. It was my car. High speeds, filming, and incredible talent from Tommy and his crew. We did a great interview on that. If you missed that interview, link down below. Put a link up in here. We'll also put links down below of the Evil Knievel jump and the video I did four days afterwards to tell you first what we did and then what did we do, explaining that that was all fun and entertainment for you guys and the fun I was expressing that I was having with that car. It never came off the ground. It was never hurt, man. Not at all. It, it was uh, it was an honor. Even like in the video, there was a ramp in there, and I didn't see that until the final edit. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I said, "I wish I would have been there when he had the ramp." It was Rick. The ramp was never there. I go, "What?" He goes, "I'm kind of glad it wasn't there." I go, "Why?" He goes, "Because your dumbass really would have tried to jump the car." And I said, "Yeah, you're probably right." <laughs> so that was that, just clear the air again on that. I'll be at shows across the country. He's like, "Wow, man, that was great, Rick. You jumped your car." And I just now to the point, it's like, you know, it's after a year and you believe that and then I got to crush you that there's no Santa Claus. I didn't jump that car, but I got the suit and I'm going to wear it at a couple of shows coming up this year. So if you're interested in my car was a point of this conversation, sorry, 86.9 or best offer. I know what's going on in the marketplace. I'm trying to be very, very fair and I'll be flexible. We'll take in trades and that kind of stuff. So yeah, let me know. Information to contact me is up on the screen, uh, text or email, and I'll get back to you as fast as I can. My car should be available uh, toward the end of this month is the best estimate right now. I don't have an official build week. I'm at 3,300 status, so somewhere in that, in that realm. I'll be doing the paperwork and paying for the car, but I just want this all to be a part of it. I really, this new car is so special to me and it was a big deal. We'll talk more about it when I divulge my new spec. And I'm gonna have a contest now for you guys. So make sure that you're a subscriber of the channel. We're gonna have a lot of fun with that. You guys guessing my spec, the color, and the one option that I got that I didn't get on the first one. Gotta, even though I don't like hearing it, you know, I don't like, especially when I'm wrong, I don't like hearing it. My son Ryan said, Dad, if you would just order the Z51 in the first place, we wouldn't have to be going 
through all this drama replacing the car. It's good content and conversation, but I really, financially, it's like, you know, I've got some equity in the car now, so I'm going to relinquish all that to try and get into the new one. So, but he's right. But for those of you that have been with us, and if you're new to the channel, you may not know, my first ordered Corvette, I mean, I waited a long time, man. And I had it as a coupe, so to step up the $7,500 to the convertible, I was trying to stay within a certain budget, so yeah, I chinched out by not doing Z51 because number one, the money, but number two, I really, in my heart, didn't think I would ever drive the car in the manner that I'm driving it. But we talked about that just this past Sunday and how I'm not letting the car sit and I'm driving it and I'm enjoying it and I'm taking it on trips and I'm doing things to help you guys learn about the Corvette lifestyle. Share and enjoy in that. Learn from my mistakes and learn from my wins. That's what this channel is all about. So I didn't do the Z51 and I do regret it. And it really is designed. There's some other things just besides brakes and so forth that, and we've talked about that before too, that the Z51 brings to the table in that car. And I'm not going to be, let's face it, could I, could I take my existing car right now and maybe change rotors and brakes, you know, to performance stuff and get some cooling underneath there, change the brake fluid? Because I'm not doing competition driving. Let's face it, I'm not, I'm not that talented at that stuff. I have fun out there and I want to push it as much as I can and I want to be safe, but I, I don't think I need to worry about all that. So my existing car, could I convert it a little bit to accomplish and satisfy my racing needs? Um, yeah, it's still a possibility. I hope it's not, the 2023 70th anniversary thing, you guys can't see from here, it means a lot to me. I've talked about this before too, a couple of weeks ago on Coffee with Conti. This was the first Corvette that I ordered and I didn't get it. 2003, 50th anniversary, so those, significant years in Corvette, they do mean something to me and it would give me great pride. Even though there's some new features and all that kind of crap coming for 24, to have a 70th anniversary acknowledgement on my car would be super cool. So that's kind of the goal and the mindset and want to make it eventful by doing a museum delivery. So again, contact me if you're interested in buying my uh, 2021. Uh, it would be uh, a lot of fun to give you a send-off pad on my car. So thank you for the consideration and the understanding. Again, I wanted to clear the air on some of that stuff. Number one, a lot of people watching didn't know exactly what my car is because we really haven't talked about it in great detail. So now you know. All right, so let's talk real quick about current Corvette production. I don't think people realize, it's really late right now, I don't think people realize how good things really are for Corvette. But it certainly doesn't feel like it, does it? It really, I, I've got lists that is just rolling over, rolling over, rolling over. Distribution so inconsistent, it's so hard to predict. You can't predict anything on this car as far as availability for somebody, if and when you can get them a car. So a lot of people have been understanding, been patient. Some people have been rude. And, you know, that's, that's our society now. I'm not letting that bother me anymore. I've got a new, I told you the other day, I've got a new focus on a lot of things, professionally and personally. So... It is what it is, man. You know, take it or leave it. If we're able to do some business with you, fantastic. There's a lot of good people. I love working with you guys. I really do. But before I talk, just I just can this is nothing as far as Intel. Just want to give you my estimate where I think we're going with 2024 volume and some challenges that we're gonna have. But where we're at right now is pretty darn good. They're on pace right now to do 40 to 43,000 cars for 2023. Like I said, it doesn't feel like that, does it? This is crazy. I was looking at some reports earlier. We're about 23,500 Stingrays made so far, about 2,400 70th anniversary Stingrays, and then you got, eh, not quite, but about 800 Z06s. So that's uh, just over 27,000 cars right now. And on pace, if production stays, I used an average about 180 cars a day. I might be off on that, might be a little high, so I think the 40 to 43,000 cars is quite feasible. That's incredible. That was always their goal, is to hit that 40, maybe a little bit more, but it, it doesn't feel like it, does it? Come a little closer, let's talk 24 for a quick second. Thank you for joining us today. I love the opportunity to talk Corvette with you anytime that we can. So for 2024 Corvette, guys, again, as it has been each and every year for C8, it's going to be an exciting year. Let me just say this real quick for a lot of people blowing me up about E-Ray. I heard dealers are taking orders. They're taking orders. They're not taking anything but your money and your name and your phone number and your email. 
You can't order an E-Ray yet. We don't know how many we're gonna get. We don't know what the mix is going to be. Please relax. This has been year over year of the same thing. Once we know, we'll let you know. Right now, we know nothing about true availability of E-Ray. They are ready to build this car. And this is what I think. You gotta remember this too. Now you got three models. They're gonna be fighting for production line time. And Kai Spandy's talked about it time and time again, how intricate and how detailed and how long some of these cars take based on their options. They can't simultaneously do two Z06s or even two hardtop convertibles together. Then factor in front lift. That adds more time to production. Z06, you don't think that takes more time than a Stingray? Absolutely it does. What do you think the E-Ray's gonna do to production? So what's gonna happen to 24, in my opinion, is gonna be one of two things. Either there's gonna be a ton of Stingrays and they'll do the very best they can and this will be a specialty car, but not quite limited edition, but still people fighting and vying for that car. Or they're gonna focus on these cars, do the best they can because they take longer and the offset is be lower production that we're gonna have this year and then the offset's gonna be less available Stingrays. So I think what we're gonna see in 2024 is 27,000 Stingrays I think we're going to see 5,000 Z06s, and yeah, I think the focus is going to be E-Ray. I think you're going to see 8,000 E-Rays next year. So look at these numbers now. This is still the focus. This is your volume car, but these cars take a lot more time. They're going to cut into the pie. I think this percentage in this realm is where we're going to be for 2024, and I think we're still going to be in the situation that people are going to be in a hurry up and wait for whatever model that you guys are looking for. It's good, but it's bad, right? Because it's bad if you're not the person that can get a car. It's good if you're getting one of these and you see all the hype that everybody's talking about is for real. But looking at the numbers now, like I said earlier, we're on pace for 2023 to do 40 to 43,000 cars, man. That's freaking incredible. Now I know these numbers right here equal 40,000 cars as it is, but I think if the focus becomes these two models, and it really becomes an issue and it becomes more time than even we know, this number could go from 27,000 back down to 22,000. So they're still in, then you're back to 35,000 cars is where I originally thought they were gonna be. But right now, seeing these numbers being so high, I think they are gonna push the 40, but it's gonna be what model's gonna get more focus and priority. But I think E-Ray is gonna, is gonna supersede the Z06 for a number of reasons. And <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no way you can read any of that crap, but <laughs> Hopefully you heard what we were talking about. Gives you an idea. Just, you know, because I'm a numbers guy trying to predict projections, uh, it just puts things in perspective. You know what I mean? Trying to set expectations for you guys in this car is still nearly impossible. Uh, we're thankful at the opportunities and we're having fun, but it is, uh, it is still very, very demanding. And I'm kind of curious where this is all going to lie for 2024. We'll keep you up to date. We'll do more production updates. We'll talk about production constraints, availability, lack of availability, all that kind of stuff right here on this channel. Thank you for joining us today. Join me Sunday for my Coffee with Conti show. I don't have a clue what we're going to be doing, but it'll be something Corvette. Uh, maybe a delivery, you know, send off Pat. I'm, I'm backed up on those that I filmed and I haven't shared, so I probably should do some of those. I got a bunch of stuff here I haven't opened. Uh, I think I got some stuff underneath the desk too I haven't opened yet from viewer mail. You guys are awesome. Thank you. I love you to death. And then Tuesday, Chuck and I are back with another Tech Tuesday. Thanks for watching today. Take it easy. I'll see you guys soon.